Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver. And this is our video lecture over section 11.6, which uh, we're continuing probability. We're just going to do a little bit more complicated events than the last ones. So we're going to look at events involving not, and, and events involving or, and then some odd problems. Odds problems, excuse me. So to find the probability that an event will not occur, find the probability of one event or a second, occur, second event occurring, and then understand odds. So, uh, we're going to start with the probability of an event not occurring. We call this the complement of an event. So if we have an event and we want to know the probability that it will not occur, we're finding the probability of its complement. Um, if we know the P of E, the probability of event E, then we can determine the probability that the event will not occur denoted by P not E. The probability that an event E will not occur is equal to 1 minus the probability that it will occur. So for instance, if we know that the probability that it will rain on a particular day is 30%, then the probability that it will not rain will be 100 minus 30, 70%. Um, so I'm just using 100% versus 1, but it's the same idea. If I know that the probability of event is 1 fifth, the probability that the event will not occur is 1 minus 1 fifth, which is 4 fifths. So um, it just this is basically what this is talking about. Sometimes they use... Uh, complement notation with the E apostrophe like we saw in exam one. So this is just a little bit more formal stuff, but it's pretty easy knowing the probability of an event will not occur. It's just one minus the probability of that event. So if you're dealt one card from a standard 52 card deck, find the probability that you're not dealt a queen. Well, what's the probability of selecting a queen? There are four out of four queens out of 52 and four out of 52 equals uh, 1 out of 13. They reduced that already. So remember, the probability of a queen is 4 out of 52, and they reduced that already to 1 out of 13. So 1 minus 1 out of 13 is 12 out of 13. And if you wanted to convert that to a percent, which I'll do right here, twelve divided by thirteen. Enter to a percent, that'd be ninety-two point three percent. I did by 10 again, sorry. Let's multiply by 10 again. 92.3%, excuse me. So, let's continue. Let's complement problems. All right, now, or probabilities. Or, 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 okay. So, let's find the probability using the word or with mutually exclusive events. So, what are mutually exclusive events, sometimes called disjoint events? Um, events A and B are mutually exclusive if it is impossible for them, occur to, for them to occur simultaneously. So or probabilities with mutually exclusive events, if A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B, we just add the, 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 the sum, or we sum up their probabilities, the probability of A plus the probability of B. So let's say we're going to randomly select a card from a deck of cards, and let's say you're playing a game of cards, whatever, and one more card is going to come, and you win the game if a king or a queen comes. All right, you want to know the probability that you're going to win the game. So uh, a king and a queen cannot occur at the same selection. Okay, they cannot occur simultaneously. That's what mutually exclusive means, not being able to occur simultaneously. So we can't get a king and a queen, but we can win the game if we get a king or a queen. So we want to know the probability of winning if we get a king or a queen. We just add the probabilities of getting a king and a queen together. There are four kings out of 52 cards. There are four queens out of 52 cards. We add those up. And remember, when you add fractions, you have to have this common denominator. And then we just add the numerator. So 4 plus 4 is 8. Over 52 is 52. 8 over 52 reduces to 2 out of 13. And if you want, you could convert that to a percent. So I would just do, you know, 4 divided by 52 plus 4 divided by 52 okay gives us that and that is um, and if remember you can convert that to a reduced fraction if you want or you can just get the decimal which I've shown here 15.4 percent probability that you get a king or a queen all right now or probabilities with events that are not mutually exclusive so if A and B are not mutually exclusive events, then the probability that A or B will occur is determined by adding their individual probabilities 
and subtracting the probability that A and B occur simultaneously. So this is still, you know, we're still adding probabilities. Or always means to add, but if we, uh, if they aren't mutually exclusive, then we need to count the overlap, or uh, we need to subtract, excuse me, the overlap because we'll have counted that stuff twice. Using set notation, the probability of getting A or B is the sum of the probabilities minus their overlap. Because if we count them separately, then we'll count the overlap twice. So we need to subtract it. That's the last part of this formula, which is different from mutually exclusive because they can't happen at the same time. Here, they can happen at the same time because they're not mutually exclusive. So it says, here's an example. So in a group of 25 baboons, 18 enjoy grooming their neighbors, 16 enjoy screeching wildly, wildly, while 10 enjoy doing both at the same time. So if one baboon is selected at random, find the probability that it enjoys grooming its neighbors or screeching wildly. So since 10 of the baboons enjoy both grooming their neighbors and screeching wildly, these events are not mutually exclusive. So if we take the 18 that enjoy grooming neighbors and 16 that enjoy screeching and add those together, we'll have counted the 10 that that like doing both twice, so we need to subtract those off. So we'll take the 18 that we that like grooming our neighbors, the 16 that like screeching, but remember 10 like doing both. So 10 is actually part of this 16 and 10 is part of that 18. So if we add this together, we're counting that 10 twice. We need to subtract it off. So we don't count it twice and we get 24 out of 25 baboons. 18 plus 16 is 34 minus 10. 24 out of 25. Okay, so odds to probability. So sometimes you'll see odds for various events like in gambling or whatever. And if you want to know the probability of that particular event from the odds, that's what we're covering here. So if the odds in favor of an event are A to B, then the probability of the event is given by A divided by A plus B. So let's look at an example. So you'll see this with horse racing a lot. It says the odds in favor of a particular horse winning a race are 2 to 5. What is the probability that horse will win a race? So really what this means is um, the odds, if you were to put down $200 for this horse to win the race, and they won the race, you would get $500. That's betting what that means. But what is the probability that that horse will win the race? So 2 to 5. So odds in favor of A to B, uh, uh, then the probability is A divided by A plus B. So 2 to 5 means 2 divided by 2 plus 5, 2 sevenths. And 2 sevenths is approximately 2 divided by 7, approximately a 28.6% chance of winning the race. So that's kind of a cool thing. If you ever see odds, you can convert the odds into probability and get a good idea of the likelihood of that event. Because odds, the way they quote odds, it's all for betting things, and horse racing is a big betting thing. So that's it for probability. Good luck. We'll see you next time.